How are we going everybody? Now yesterday we spoke about split trees from high winds, our black locust with the pink flowers, this one that I'm standing next to, um, had to split. We've cleaned off uh, the main branch, you can see we just chopped it up, we're going to let that cure. I'm going to use some of those on the bonfire, we've got one little one here still to prune, but the main problem is down here, this is the split that we've got. Now, I was going to, normally in this circumstance here, we should be able to close it, you know, get a G-clamp on it, put a bolt through the centre, pull it tight, and then paint it over with hydrated lime to seal it, and leave it there for a number of years for it to, to fuse again, because there's still a lot of, you know, live bark here or cambium lay underneath here that's active. It's uninterrupted, so the sap flow is working, and it's, if it was only open for half a day, it'd be easy enough to push it tight well with a little bit of force, a bolt, a 12 inch, sorry, a 12 mil bolt that goes through. It probably have to be about 20, 20 centimetres, 25 centimetres long. With washers on the end, you pull that tight and you leave it there and it uh, refuses itself over time. But because we've got borers in here, this is going to come off. Now, whether I fill it in with a mortar, plaster of Paris, or anything else that goes hard, is yet to be decided. We need to see what's going on inside because at the end of the day, I may not be able to fill it in. Just put a whitewash over it so we can seal it, protect it. And I'm going to use our hydrated lime. This is our disease control pack or part of it. And make a little mix to turn it into a paint. Now, hydrated lime, you've probably seen it used in many gardens, you know. Greeks predominantly or Europeans like to paint their trunk. It's a natural antiseptic or steriliser. It's, it stops bacteria developing or disease or even insects travelling that easily. It's cheap. And I'm going to need to put a fair bit of that stuff in here to, to, to buy that is, folks. It's cheap enough to buy and easy enough to use. And when you do make the mix, it's always good to let it sit for a while. Most times I suggest overnight so that it infuses properly. You can see that it's starting to turn into a paint. It's still a little bit runny, folks. Put a little bit more in there. You don't want it as thick as dough. You want it sort of creamy. And the longer it sits, the creamier it gets because it starts to absorb all the little microscopic particles of the hydrated lime. As you can see, there's still lumps in there. Once they hydrate, this will thicken up a lot more. Now, I don't think I've actually made enough, so more water, more hydrated lime. Just put this aside to let it infuse a little bit longer. And let's get stuck into this. I suspect they've actually entered through this little crack here. This vert and if you have a listen to this, that's hollow. That is hollow. All right, let's just cut this off and see what's going on inside, huh? It's as hollow as down there. Have a look at that. The further down I go, the bigger the cavity. Oh, Pandora's box. Oh, look at that. They're all nesting in there. The butchy boys, everything. Look at that. Look how soft that is. That's had it. That's hollow. Wow, seriously? That's all soft in there? It's wet too. Oh, God. I think we're going to be pulling out the big chainsaw here, folks, taking the whole tree down before it falls on the little house here. Look at that, it's just sawdust in there. As I'm actually cutting into the centre, I can feel it's really, really loose. Well, they certainly didn't move in yesterday, did they? After the tree fell. Look at this. Look at this. Sawdust and mud. I'm down to here so far. It's hollowed down to there. Oh, I don't know. Touch and go here. Just going to keep opening it up all the way down. But if I do that, then I'm going to lose its integrity, its structural integrity, because if I open all this up, so that's solid there now. But who knows how far down this goes and how much damage they're causing. It's just so wet. Folks, if you had a tree that's split from the high winds, 
and you've had a close look at it and there aren't any bugs or grubs or you know borers in there uh, it's purely because it was top heavy and the wind was the winds were too high well you can easily join it together or cut it off and fill it in with hydrated lime uh, plaster of paris mortar i've seen people use concrete mix they've you know they've trailed it on there smoothed it off and over time it's gone hard and it's part of the actual tree so you can do any of those to fix it but when you've got a borer and a whole colony of bugs in there and it's like muck really moist well you can't really fill it in until you're 100% sure you got rid of the bug. So what am I going to do? I'm just tossing in my head, I think I might get some eco neem, make a mix of eco neem and actually pour it in there. And hopefully I can just drown him in the, in the, uh, the oil, the neem oil, and then fill it in. I'm actually going to fill this in. I'm going to do that actually. I like the tree. I'm, I mean, they're tough as nails, Rubinias, but you know, they grow really fast. This one's really stretched out. But uh, you know, after splitting like this, it shows you that there are problems with the tree. And here, you can see where the, there's a crack here. That's where all the moisture has been running through. That's why it's so darkened off, because it was oxidizing. So it was holding on there, but not here. Now, they were eating their way through this little crack here. Well, it's not cracked, but over time, as it was, you could see they were eating into it. It's starting to rot out all that stuff there so that's why it was selling, sounding hollow. So eco neem, I'm going to pour it in, first I'm going to take out as much mud as I can, pour, pour eco neem in there and then I'm going to see if I've got any <laughs> rapid suit concrete or something like that, I can fill it in. I've been thinking about this, I think the only way I'm going to be able to try and salvage this in any shape or form is by drilling a hole down below here. I'm going to go just above the ground level, hopefully well, I don't hope to, I hope I don't encounter the cavity, therefore I have to drill a bit higher, but anyway, if it is down here, it is down here. Drill a hole so I can flush it out. So I'm going to put some water in there and see if I can flush out as much of those, or that sawdust that's just turned to muck. We've got some drainage going on here, folks. We've unblocked the pipes. The sewer's flowing freely now. I've just done the first flush with clean water. Now I'm going to do another flush. And I'm going to put some eco neem. Nine mils, or sorry, two mils per litre, which makes it 10 mils for five litres, or 20 mils for 20, 10 litres. I don't know what I put in there. Ah, uh, what have we got there? 10, five. So we'll squeeze a bit more. There we are. Put that in. I'm going to flush it again with the eco neem. Now the residual of this will actually stay on the bark itself and hopefully if there is any pest still in there in the cavities we get them with the eco neem and that knocks them out. Um, now that's all we can do at the moment. They've all come out folks. Have a look at this. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. In here, down here, look at that. They're all coming out of the cracks and crevices. Alright, this isn't a, a quick fix job. If we rush this, we're going to make a mess of it. So what we've got to do now is actually flush it out with AK neem, let it sit. Let's see how they go. Well, I might need to get a drill bit and just sort of drill into these cavities and open them up a bit more, see if I can flush them out, because I don't know how far in the cavities go, but they there are definitely at least a dozen or two bugs in there. And the milky white colour that you're looking at is the AK neem mixed together with the water, that's blocked again. Why is that blocked? There we are. We shouldn't be blocking. Look at him, look at him, look, look. You're not going anywhere, guys. Obviously you're not going anywhere because you've got a good grip on the wood there. Get down, get out of here. Not the right tool, but I tell ya, you know how to use your tools to make anything work. Wow, <laughs> wow, how thick's a truck? Now folks, don't go doing what I'm doing like this with a spade bit. Honestly, if you haven't done this before and you haven't used these sort of tools before in, in crazy ways like I'm doing at the moment, then don't go ahead and try it, okay? So don't do what I do. Call an arborist in, call a, call a tree surgeon in because I've just woken up the sleeping colony here and I've got to keep drilling. Look, they're all the way in there. There's a whole, there's a whole soy for you Greeks out there, you know what I'm talking about. The whole family, cousins, uncles, aunties, neighbours, you name it, they're all here. 
Yeah, there's probably a different type of tool you can use to do this, but I haven't got it here. Well, it's about 200 metres away and I'm not walking away from this. I'm going to get stuck into this and I, I'm probably going to end up cutting this tree down to the ground because I'm going deeper and deeper into the trunk. I'm about halfway into the trunk and I, I'm not finding any soft wood, or fresh wood, sorry. Not soft wood. I've got plenty of soft wood here, rotten wood. I need to find some clean wood here. Look at this, look at this, look at this whole colony here. That's just from another hole that I just drilled into the into the centre of the trunk. And now they're all in there. Now I've got to try and get them out of there. Folks, there's literally hundreds of slaters in here. Now they're feeding off this decaying wood because there were borers in here once upon a time. They may still, still be in here. I haven't found them yet or I can't see them because there's so many other creatures or slaters going on. All the butchy boys, they love to feed on rotting timber and hence why they've nested in here and it's just starting to rot through. So once you've got that rot in there, it's pretty difficult to stop unless you get sunlight or dry it out completely. And I've got to get to every little nest in there too. So leave this with me. Part two is going to come up and we're going to see what's happening you know, in a day or two, how it dries out and then we start to fill it in. In the meantime folks, check out our website vasilisgarden.com, 44% off everything online for four days. Melbourne Cups sharing the spirit across Australia. Enjoy some great deals and specials on a wide range of products. It's vasilisgarden.com and the coupon code word is STORM. Type that in and watch the prices drop from me, Vasily Maresi.